Okay, this is Joe Crine. We're on Elvis Express Radio, and I have uh, Sandy K. Stevens with me here today. Sandy, how you doing? I'm doing just fine, Joe, and yourself? Uh, not bad. Hey, um, where were you born and raised? Well, I was born in Indiana, Indianapolis. I was raised here in Los Angeles, California. Okay, what kind of music did you like when you were growing? Well, when I was a young girl, um, my mother always listened to um, Hank Williams. She kind of liked the the Western uh, music. And so uh, as I got older, you know, the rock and roll came in, and I, I really started liking that. I liked all the hits of the, uh, the oh, what, 50s and 60s, so... Right. Now, I mean, I can't believe some of the, you were friends with some of the biggest rock icons. I, I mean, was. <laughs> I'm amazed. I'm amazed how many people that you, you actually knew. You knew, what, Fabian? I knew Fabian. I dated Fabian. Jerry Lee I Lewis? Knew, I knew Jerry Lee Lewis. We were friends. Uh-huh. So he called me when he came into town and so I could go to a show with him. So he would be performing here and I'd go with him. And you, and you said you dated Fabian. How long did you date, uh, date Fabian? I We had lunch several times when he'd come into L.A. And actually, we were friends. We were just friends. It wasn't anything romantic. We were just friends. And he was really nice. Yeah. Can you tell me some of the other rock icons that you knew before we get to the biggest one? The biggest one of all? Yeah. Uh, well, I dated James Burton, who at the time was a mechanic. Uh, part-time mechanic, and then he worked uh, his gig with Rick Nelson. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, and I went to a, a lot of, Rick had a lot of parties, and this was when Elvis was in the Army, so I got to know Ricky pretty well through James. And uh, at the time, we called him Jimmy. So later years, when I saw he was calling himself James, I, I was a bit surprised because he was always, you know, gentle, low key. He probably still still is, but I haven't seen him in years. Did but, he? Uh, did he ever play mm -hmm. guitar? Did he ever play guitar to you? No, actually, he wanted to know more about Elvis. He didn't know Elvis. No. That, this was like 1959. Elvis was in the army, mm -hmm. and so who, little did he know where his life was going to go. But um, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, let me see who else. I knew a lot of uh I knew Frankie Avalon uh, my my girlfriend dated him and whenever she was going to go out with him she called me cuz she liked me to go along so that was fun and uh I was just a Hollywood kid you know seemed to get invited everywhere and it's just because of where you lived I guess so. You know, things just sort of happened. I, I went to school with uh, a few of the uh, entertainers that became entertainers later on, like Stacy Keach was our high school president. Huh. And uh, I don't know for some of the younger folks don't know who he is. Oh, I do. <laughs> you do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, some of the Mouseketeers, the original Mouseketeers. And... Uh, and we just knew each other. We went to each other's houses, and uh, yeah, because you see, where I live is right near all the studios, and where everything is ha was happening for me. So right. that's just how it was. Got lucky, I guess. Yeah. So how was it? That, how, how did you meet Elvis Presley? Okay, um, I had a I got lucky. I got a little extra part in the movie because my girlfriend's father was a big executive with Paramount Studios mm -hmm. and they needed some girls to fill in the seats uh, for uh, a few of the songs and so uh, he just called my mom to see if it might be okay if I, you know, I'm like for real because <laughs> I was like, I had just seen him on the Ed Sullivan show. I thought I'd die to see him, you know. Right. And I, I get this phone call. It was right right after New Year's 1957. So, because I met him in 57. So he had just turned 22. And, uh, yeah, that's, had to be at the studio at 4.30 for makeup and hair and so it was 
Here I am, 13 years old. It's pretty exciting. What movie was it? Loving You. It was Loving You? Wow. Wow, Loving You. Did yeah. You, did you uh, meet his parents? And uh, I did. <laughs> what? What? How were they? So sweet. You know, I, I adored his mom. I have to say his dad, he was nice. He was a little, I don't know if he was shy or just quiet. Because I was a kid, so I really didn't know. Right. But his mother talked. You know, we went. We were invited back to his Hollywood uh, at the hotel there after the uh, shooting was over. I couldn't believe that either. <laughs> but he was inviting a few friends, and he just asked us if we'd like to go. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I wouldn't say no to that one. And um, his mom just, you know, she just talked. She wanted to know about you. And I think that's where Elvis got that, was from his mother. Elvis always wanted to know about you and what you were doing and things like that. But his mom wanted to know, you know, what do you want to do when you, you know, get out of high school and or out of school. I think I was still in junior high. That's what we called it back then. Right. T today they call it middle school or whatever. But... um I, I felt like I wanted to tell her I want to marry your son. But I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> that was only in my heart. <laughs> she would have said you and everybody else. Yeah, wait in line. But anyway, so, but it was from that time that Elvis started calling me to come up to, to visit him. Uh -huh. So um, to make a long story short, we had a, a six-year friendship. It was about six years. I also starred in a movie, and I didn't star in it, I'm sorry, I wish I did, was Viva Las Vegas. I had an extra part. So, and that was fun. Did you ever get paid for doing these little extra pieces? Yes, you do. Yeah. Did you, you get paid a get lot? Paid. Did you get paid a lot? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Well, let's see, back then, I think I made $150. Okay. For... For a day shooting, so and if you shoot two or three days, it's it's the same pay, 150, 150, 150. Goodness, I'd would like to have just the check from the movie. You know, you can do really well as an extra if you work all the time. But the trouble with that is you don't. So right. if you're trying to live on that money, you're you know there may be months you don't work. So because right. I tried it for a while, and. Um, you know, when I was older, and I, I could have gotten into the union, but I didn't, I didn't want to because I figured, you know, I, I need to pay for an apartment and pay for whatever. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but it was fun, you know, because I, I was able to do a lot. Of, I had enough credits to get in the union from that and some other um, movies that I was in. Uh -huh. So, uh, but anyways, that, that didn't work out, but it was fun. So what kind of person was Elvis Presley to sit down and talk to? He was delightful. He he wanted people around him that he could trust, that, uh, you know, because he was a bit insecure. I mean, that may sound funny, but Elvis was a little bit insecure about about things. And But when he got to know you, he wanted to share things with you because he had a lot going inside him. I mean, to deal with... Coming from being a little truck driver uh, to, you know, a, a famous entertainer, it was, it was, you know, he was probably just as surprised as anybody else. Right. So he needed friends around him that he felt comfortable with and that he enjoyed. So, and he liked to, you know, he'd have you up in the evening and, and we'd do whatever he wanted to do. He kind of set the tone for the evening if he wanted to watch TV, or maybe he felt like singing, playing the piano. I never saw him play the guitar when he was at his house. He never, I never saw a guitar, actually, mm. but, but he played a piano great. And um, so we'd sing, or he, he and the guys would play pool, and us girls, maybe we'd sit and just, you know, start laughing about whatever. We were just teenagers, and Elvis would be so funny. He'd come over and he'd want to know what was so funny. You know? <laughs> right. We could have been, I mean, he was so nosy. <laughs> he was so cute. But, I mean, it's just teenage girl. He, but he always had this, 
in insecurity that, you know, we were talking about him. Well, we might have been talking about him, but not in the way he thought, you know. Right. Like, well, what's wrong with me? Or, you know, wow. did I do something wrong? But he was cute. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, you got a nickname from his mother. Can you tell us what that's all about? Yes. Um, when we were riding up the elevator, coming home from the studio that day, uh, one of the days that I'd seen him, I was over at the studio, and he, she said to Elvis, she, she said, um, isn't she an itty-bitty little thing? And Elvis says, she sure is, Mama. I want to call her a little bit. And in that thick accent, and I just ah, uh, <laughs> almost dropped at the floor of the elevator. So, so that was my name. That was my nickname. A little and, bit. And you know, in a way, it was good, Joe, because there were so many Sandys around. Right. All right. Now, um, he worked hard to get rid of that accent. Yeah, Hollywood kind of took a lot of it away from him, which was so sad because. In the beginning years, it I sometimes had a hard time dealing with the southern accent. Like when he'd, he'd pull me to him and he'd say, you know, give me some sugar, baby. And I didn't know what that meant. Uh, what What is that? <laughs> I didn't bring any. And I, I felt embarrassed. And so then he'd, he'd land one on me, you know. Uh-huh give me a big kiss and he says that's what sugar is baby <laughs> all right well i gotta ask only because the girls who just heard that are swooning how was it kissing elvis presley oh wonderful <laughs> wonderful you died and went to heaven a few times <laughs> goodness yeah yeah he he had the softest sweetest lips and he just kissed you like he loved you so much you know mm -hmm. and uh made you feel like a princess and so he was just just so special. And to grow up knowing him, I mean, I couldn't believe it. Oh, you were so. very lucky. Now, let me. you told me that, uh, well, he liked to have people around. And you had said to me if there wasn't somebody around that he would send the guys over. Could you... He would send a, a fella down uh, to Sunset Boulevard to bring up more girls. Yeah, he had times where he didn't feel there were enough uh, girls in the house. <laughs> so he would send one of the guys in one of the limos to pick up girls from the Absolutely. strip. Absolutely. And back then, um, when somebody, I mean, I wouldn't trust somebody today saying you want to go meet so-and-so, but these girls, here they came, you know, got in the limo and came back up. Oh, they must have been all over him. Well, they were, I think they were just as shocked as, you know, because at first, I don't think they believed this was really happening. Maybe they thought they were being taken to a party. But here's a nice white limo, and uh, they figure, well, it must be something, but right. not Elvis Presley, but it was cute. <laughs> yeah, now, I think they just stood there and looked, you know. Right. Now well, he enjoyed it. You were around when uh, his mama passed. I was. I was back in Indiana, and I was wishing my grandparents, because I was only 14, I was wishing my grandparents could have taken me down there, but they wouldn't. They'd say, they said something like, you'll only be in the way, and maybe I would have, yeah. Cause, but he was just back from Fort Hood. I think he had to leave the Army base to, to right. you know, see his mom. Right. So looking back, it probably was best that I didn't go. Did he ever talk to you after that about his mom? We had many uh, an all-night talks about his mom's spiritual things and uh, just whatever was on his mind. He wanted to, felt like talking about it. I listened. I give my input, and I think he'd like that. I could keep up with him very, very easily. Did, did he know that you were telling him the truth and not just what he wanted to hear? Well, for instance... Um, Oh, he asked me a little bit, you think I'll get to see my mother again? I mean, he was really being serious. Uh -huh. And I said, I, I truly believed it. I mean, I had, you know, gone to Bible classes as a kid. And I mean, it was my opinion. I mean, I certainly wasn't a preacher. But, but, but the, I had a lot of insight, which uh, he liked about me. 
And I uh, wasn't a dummy, but I wasn't the you know the brightest bulb in the chandelier <laughs> for being a, a kid, you know. Right. But uh, he obviously enjoyed it because many nights, yeah, he just liked to share some quiet time away from people. And because I was the only one there that ever had met his mother, um, he, he just felt the need to talk to uh, about her. So that was fine, you know. And so we did. Oh, wow. Wow. Hey, yeah. um, did you ever see... Um, well, I'm sorry. Would you get quite upset about talking about it? I mean... No, not really. No. Uh, emotional. Uh, but uh, but I think when I got through talking to him and sharing some spiritual things that were on my mind at the time, mm -hmm. to, you know, could re regarding anybody um, that had perhaps passed away, he liked it. You know, he liked it. And, um, you know, we talk about some scriptures in the Bible and, uh, you know, what what it meant. Right. What I thought it meant, you know, the way I was taught. He liked it. Right. So uh, one Christmas, uh, my mother had a real nice Bible made for him with gold, gold leaf, kind of, with his name engraved. I wondered what happened to that, but I'll never know. So, um, but he liked it. That was a nice, nice gift. Did he seem to you after that, because he seemed to everybody else that Elvis changed? after his mom's death. Did he seem changed to you? You know, I think as time went on, yeah, he did change. I change, I think he changed more when he came back from the Army. He changed. Well, you know, part of it was he had grown up True. a little bit, you know, because he was almost a kid when I met him. He was just out of his teenage years. Right, so, right. Well, he was 22 when I met him. Now, did you so, ever... I'm sorry. Go keep going. Go ahead. On. Did you ever see? Um, did Elvis have a bad temper at times? He did. Can you tell us? He about did. Him? Yeah, he did have a bad temper. He didn't show it too often, but if someone were to, you know, push the buttons, um, he could get pretty mad. <laughs> okay. Could you tell us about any of them? Well, there was an incident at. Um, uh, at one of the houses that uh, we were downstairs. He had a pool table. This particular one was downstairs, and all the people that wanted to play pool went downstairs. And there was this one lady, girl, she seemed older than me, but um, she kept egging him on, you know, kind of aggravating him and uh, saying names to him and, you know, just really not behaving very nicely. Oh, I but know this. A, I know this story. <laughs> you know the story. I've read this story, yeah. Yes, and it actually is true. Wow. And he got angry, and, uh, you know, he took a pool stick and threw it at her. And, I mean, I he just went so long, and this woman would not let up. Uh -huh. So, yeah, he got mad. That was, that was the time my son would get pretty mad. So. Did he ever get mad at you? No, he never got mad at me, but I was in the room one time when he got mad at something and threw an ashtray or a vase against his jukebox and broke it all to heck. But, um, no, I don't think he was mad at me, cause, uh, except that everybody had left the room but me, so I guess I didn't even know if he was mad or not till I saw the ashtray coming towards the jukebox and see he's so cute when he's all done getting mad then he he sits back down like nothing you know so it could have been something from work or somebody said something or i don't know i don't know so but you know what that was about uh the only time that i, I you know that i'd see him get upset mm -hmm. so but i understand the later years i guess he he seemed to get more agitated about things. So, well, yeah. did, could you see that there were some people around him that were just not not trustworthy? And did yeah. Elvis? Did Elvis know? I mean, did Elvis know? I I think he got word of it. You sure? Yeah. And did they suddenly disappear? Or yeah, you didn't see him anymore. Yeah. Well, that's that's a good thing actually. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I said he, you know, he wanted people around him that he could trust. And he never knew it until they were around him for a while. So. Did you ever get any nice gifts from Elvis through those years? I mean, it was six years. I'm trying to get as much out of you about six years. Oh, sure. No, uh, the Christmas that I gave him the Bible, he gave me the cutest. Uh, it was a little leather case with a radio and a, and a clock that you could take with you if you traveled, or I took the radio to school with me because it had earplugs. It was a transistor radio. Uh -huh. And so, because usually around the Christmases, he was gone. But this particular Christmas, he was here later on. He was late in the year before he, um, after Christmas, he went home. So I guess he had gifts for everybody. This, oh, these were the times where he wasn't giving everybody jewelry and, you know, he hadn't gotten that far yet, right. money-wise, I don't think. So, um, yeah, that was about it. I can't remember anything else. You know, sometimes little trinkets he'd give us or uh, sometimes I'd come up, I'd have, I'd have dinner with him. I mean, these were the most delightful, fun times because he was, he wasn't quite, you know, it was just the movies he was doing. He wasn't going on stage. And I think I had the best years of him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I really did. Because he was gentle and he was sweet and he, he was lovable and, you know, and a southern gentleman, really, he was. Did you ever meet uh, Colonel Parker? Yes, I did, at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. And Colonel Parker really liked me. Um, for what reason? I have no clue. <laughs> but whatever I wanted, I, I'd ask him a question. I, I see him, and he'd always say hi. And um, I said I wanted, you know, my mom to meet Elvis. Well, he arranged a dinner downstairs at the Beverly Wilshire, and Elvis was, you know, came down and met my mom. We had dinner. Uh huh. And thank you for reminding me because there's so much that happened in six years. And then for the colonel, when one of Elvis's movies was coming out, he liked me to be in front of the theater holding a sign or <laughs> dress real cute, you know, something to do with the movie. And right. I did that for him. So, so what did uh, Elvis think about your mom, and what did your mom think about Elvis? She adored him. I mean, she was in love, too. And he was just so sweet, you know, and he kind of cracked jokes and... You know, wanted to know about my mom and uh, just the family, and uh, he'd talk about his family, and it was just really, really nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was just, you wouldn't expect that from a, a famous person as Elvis. He was so down to earth that you never were nervous. You know, he made you feel so at ease. Right. So, mom just thought that was the best thing that ever happened to her. Probably was. Can you ever can you tell us about any funny stories that you know about Elvis that, that that things that you saw something that happened something that he did Funny stories Uh well we had fun I don't know about they're funny but we had fun playing the piano or him playing the piano cuz I got to sit and sing with him Uh-huh So I had a pretty fair voice then and Charlie and Red would chime in and and he if he missed a note or he did something, you know, he'd, he'd laugh about it. You know, let's do that again, you know. Right, uh, right. So, and he'd say, little bit, don't try to sing over me. <laughs> 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 like, are you serious? <laughs> How could I do that? But I, maybe I was, you know, was singing a little louder and he was trying to sing soft, trying to get the tone right. What, what do I know? You know, I was just having fun. So he'd joke around, and, you know, it was a kick. Uh, you mentioned uh, Red and Sonny and some of the other guys. Did you get along with all the other uh, guys? I got along. I didn't like Sonny. I'm sorry for who's ever listening that thinks he's great. Um, mm -hmm. my, my two favorites were Charlie and Red. Red was my buddy. I had known him while Elvis was in the Army. I actually met him through Jerry Lee, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis. So, um, and... I'd stop by his apartment a lot because he would be writing songs. And uh, who knew Red could write songs? 
Yeah. But Red was uh, pretty much, uh, he didn't live with Elvis ever. He had his own place always, and I admired him, respected him for that, because he, he didn't live off Elvis. Uh, he did, and even after Elvis passed, he, he did his own thing. He did his own thing. Uh, did his own movies and, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he was a good guy. And uh, Charlie was funny, yeah. so. <laughs> hey, uh, did you ever meet uh, Priscilla? Yeah, I met her once. What did you think uh, of Priscilla? Nothing. <laughs> oh, you didn't think of her at all? <laughs> well, you know, I, she, at that time, a bit shy. Uh, she was young, you know. Um I didn't, and the funny thing is, I didn't think that much about her because I figure she's just a, a girlfriend or a friend come to visit him. So I, I, not until he started talking to me about he's in a situation that he can't get out of. It's kind of like that song, Caught in a Trap, Suspicious Minds or whatever it is. Right. Well, you never um, thought she was something that was going to be around forever. He didn't either. He, he apparently had invited her down to Memphis, talked her parents into promising them that if she could come over, he would marry her. He didn't believe that, and he didn't think, you know, he figured he could talk himself out of anything or, you know, get out of anything. Right. How sad that was. No, so, you, go ahead. Keep going. No, it's just uh, one night he he was on a rant about that, that he, his her father threatened to ruin his career. So I sat and listened because he wanted to, to talk. I didn't say a word. It was just me and Richard Davis. We were just happened to be there, and he just started in. So we listened. That was like an all-night deal. And Elvis was basically saying he was being forced to marry Priscilla. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Well, you know, I did another interview, and I did it with Marty Lacker, and Marty Lacker said to me, Joe, I'm telling you, Elvis did not want to marry Priscilla. He was being forced into it. And now here you were there and talked to Elvis, and you're saying the exact same thing. Oh, wow. Well, because I, if I wouldn't have known if he hadn't have started talking about it. I didn't know really much about her. So I didn't know she was living at Graceland. I, I didn't know it, you know, until he brought it all out. Uh -huh. So, and then Marty talks about it. That's funny. Yeah. But, uh, well, it was true. Did he, he was very unhappy. He, he tried, I think he came back out here to make clam bake. He was trying, you know, his best to, to not have to go through with it. But yeah, he, he, it was a commitment, so he fulfilled it. He had to. Wow. And then uh, it wasn't shortly after that that, I mean, he was back seeing other gals again. That was Elvis. That yeah. was our Elvis. <laughs> I don't know. Did, I don't think Elvis was ever meant to be married. I told him that. Did and you? He didn't believe me. Yeah, because he. That was during this all this conversation that night, and I said, "Well, how did I put it? Uh, uh, I something to the point of." I, I don't think you're really meant to be married, Elvis. And he said, why? I said, look around. I mean, he's got women in every room here. I mean, you know, uh, I said, oh, one woman for you? I don't think that's going to work. He said, well, you're right on, on one count. It would never work unless I could sit and look at her 24 hours a day across the table. And I said, that's not going to happen. Wow. And I think he got a little upset. <laughs> Because he wanted to be normal like everybody else, but he wasn't. He didn't get it. Right. You know, I mean, how many men, just in general, have all these women in every room, you know, wanting to see him? Wanting to be with him. Wanting to be with him. That, too. I mean, he was a kid in the candy store. Yeah. You know? uh, hey, uh, I don't know what you're... When was the last time that you saw Elvis, uh, and why? Why did you stop seeing Elvis? Actually, I didn't stop seeing him. It wasn't like that. It was just I kind of was uh, a lot of nights he was. Remember, this is still the movie years. Right. And um, I sort of wanted, I was growing up, and I just sort of wanted to, you know, go out because I couldn't get him to go out. Not very often. We'd go to movies. Sometimes we went out to dinner, but it got to be terrible. Did it? Because, 
You got real bad. You couldn't go anywhere. Well, you can't. You exactly. You couldn't sit. We tried to sit in like a back booth. I mean, they really did try, but people knew. Either they felt his energy, whatever it was. I don't know what you call it. Mm-hmm. But we it just got to. He got mad. He he just was not having fun. So I can't stop having fun. So I started going out with some girlfriends, and we go to the clubs on the strip. But uh, and then I needed to meet other people. Mm-hmm. I mean, I still had to live my life, and I loved him. I adored him. But life went on. So when you was know. the last time that you saw Elvis? Well, although I stayed in touch, um, the last time I saw him was seventy-two, uh-huh. and I went backstage because James Burton invited me backstage. I told him I was going to be in the audience, and uh, I didn't realize that that would be the last time I saw him. It was really, you know, looking back. So, mm-hmm. cause by then I had been married and divorced, and I think he had, was going through a divorce. So we had just a few minutes to talk. We talked about Lisa. I had had two little boys, and... Um, so we tried to catch up with everything, you know, because I, I think I stopped seeing him about, about the time he got married, because I got married, he got married, and then I got divorced, he got divorced, <laughs> and so, you know, that type of thing. And so we just caught up, but I figured, well, I'll see you again, you know, it wasn't, right. wasn't left and nothing mean. Uh, some A lot of the girls would, would move on and go out, want to date other guys that not all the people in the world were after you sort of wanted to be special to somebody right right so i think that's what happened with a lot a lot of the uh gals they went on they got married but we never forgot elvis you right. know uh, so. how did you find out that elvis had passed away huh i think my son was watching cartoons uh it was in the afternoon i think it was a tuesday afternoon and somebody broke in in the news. I was in the kitchen making lunch or dinner or um, making my son something to eat. I remember that. And I thought, what did I just hear? So I went back in the living room and I said, Danny, be quiet. And I thought, no, they got that wrong. You know, Elvis didn't die. So I didn't cry. I didn't do anything. I just sat. I was just kind of stoic, kind of, you know. Yeah, hold on one second. It, Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, she heard a bump and decided to bark. Uh, so, all right, you were standing there. You didn't believe it. You didn't think it was true. No, I didn't. Until, and then, that, of course, then it was the whole, all day, then it started, or all afternoon. And then Sunny and Red and everybody, and then they started talking about the pills. And, you know, my mom had said something I just wanted to say real quick. Uh... She said, you know, he'll never live to see 50 because we'd been hearing things about Vegas, about him passing out and things like that. And she says, you you see, he, he won't make it to 50. I thought, oh, that sent chills down my spine because my mother was usually right. So, yeah, I was startled. It was terrible, terrible. Did you want to go to Memphis? Years. Did you want to go to Memphis? No, I didn't. No. No, I didn't want to go. Just uh, it was it was too much. Yeah. You know, too too emotional. Well, um, what do you think? What are you doing now? Uh, what do I do now? Well, kind of retired, and um, uh, my son lives with me, and I just have a good time. I go out with my friends, and sometimes we have lunch, or we go into the department stores and get naughty. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> with will the you credit ever, cards. Will you ever write a book? I've been asked to write a book. I've had it all finished. It's not the way I want it. Um, I've asked, you know, Alana Nash to help me out, and she would, but I can't afford her. So <laughs> I've got <laughs> I love her dearly. Yeah. But um, so we'll see what happens. I have I have a lot of stuff put together because I had a lot of Hollywood years besides my beloved Elvis. Sure. I know a lot of other people. And yeah. I know. So yeah, it would be fun. I have it. I have it together. It's yeah. just a matter of time. We'll see what happens. Well, what do you think of the everlasting popularity of Elvis Aaron Presley? Who would believe it? You know, I mean, I think uh, 
kind we all kind of went our way when he passed away because we didn't have Facebook. And now that we have Facebook, I mean, people just go crazy. You know, a lot of things they don't believe. You want to share maybe a funny little story, and some people don't believe you. And right. So fortunately for me, I've got a lot of pictures. <laughs> yes, you do. You know, so um, I, I think it's. I think it's wonderful. You know, I'd like his legacy to live on and on. And now that Lisa Presley had had the twins, I think it's nice because you know the name will continue on. Right. And he will. So. Well, San, uh, Sandy, thank you very much for being on Elvis Express Radio. Oh, thank you, Joe. Off. You know, uh, I interviewed Ed Hill, and Ed Hill was a part of the Stamps, right? Oh, okay, yes, I forgot all their names. But. Yeah, Ed Hill, and uh, he said something to me, and I'll never forget it. He said, uh, um, Elvis had gotten to the stage a little bit earlier than normal, and he, he kind of peeked out around the curtain a little bit, and he saw all the people, and he said to Ed, why do they all come? And Ed said to him, well, they, they come for you. And he said, Elvis said, but Why? Yes, there was a lot of times he questioned himself uh, in many of those conversations that we'd have at night uh -huh. that would go late into the night. That was one of them. Yes, was it, yeah, why me? Why me? I mean, I, he God. wanted to know that. He wanted me to give him an answer. Sorry, I don't have one. <laughs> you think that's why he, at the end, he really delved into uh, spirit, spirit, I can't say it, spirit, spirituality, and spirituality spirituality yeah thank you honey for saving uh, me yeah no uh but, but this was in the early years we after right. his mom had passed and he came back from the army in fact he called me a couple times from germany gee i should have told you that on the but that's okay on the radio i i could have mentioned that he actually know. called you a couple times from germany yeah he did we i called him because i had his number i just want to make sure he was doing okay he was he was out, I guess, uh, what did they do, the maneuvers or something? Uh -huh. And somebody said, you know, a little bit, he's going to call you back. And uh, he took my number down, whoever it was. And by golly, yeah, he called, and then he called me again, oh, maybe a few weeks later. First of all, he wanted to know how things were going because he thought, do the fans miss me, you know? Yeah. Are they playing my records? and. Like, are you serious? Wow. You know? wow. It was so, yes, he was very, you know, insecure. He thought nobody was going to be here when Oh, he I wish back. I had taped that. Ah! <laughs> oh. I mean, I've never See, heard See, I that. don't even think. You have to ask the questions. Or I, there's so much, like I told you, in six years. Yeah, it's it hard. It probably would have been eight years if I'd have counted the two years he was gone. You see, it's so hard. An interview only lasts about maybe 40 minutes, and... Sure. You know, I, was it 40 minutes we talked? Yeah, it's about 40 minutes. Oh, I should have brought that up, uh, but I didn't think of it. So That's all right. I could do it. What I, what I might do is just do it. Next time I talk to you, just do a short and just ask you about it. And so you, you and I were talking. We were talking on the phone, and you brought this up, and I want the listeners to hear it. And I'll just tape it. And then we'll yeah, just play we it in between. That. We'll play it in between one of the shows. I'll say to the the. The other DJ that does it with me, you know, I was talking to Sandy Kent, and she actually said how he was calling her from Germany. And oh uh, yeah, he said he was lonesome. And I taped and, it, the, and that's how we do it. But the thing that gets me, Joe, um, because, I mean, he really was uh, lonesome. I know he was because his mom had just died. But then I look at these pictures of him over in Germany, and I couldn't imagine how he could get lonesome. There was women constantly. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, but that's what he said to me. And I think he truly missed me and missed being home, of course. Did he ever ask about maybe bringing you over to Germany? No. <laughs> That'd be the day. I was still in school. Uh, I don't think my mom would have liked that too much. 